Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Syriana Analysis. I'm your host, Kirk Almasian. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's live streaming. I appreciate you all, and I know that this video will be suppressed by the YouTube's algorithm. This YouTube video will be downgraded because every time you mention Julian Assange or you write his name in the tags or in the hashtags, YouTube deliberately suppresses this content and they don't want more people to know about Julian Assange, about his case. Whether you agree with Julian Assange or not, there are few people who leave legacy behind them when they leave this world. One of the people that I believe will leave legacy after he leaves this world is Julian Assange. Whether you agree with him or not, he put himself in the forefront of a confrontation, of an information warfare, of attempt to expose government wrongdoings, corporate wrongdoings from all around the world. He exposed the United States. He leaked information or he published leaked information about different countries, be Russia, Iran, even Syria, right? Therefore, he as a publisher nowadays is facing prosecution by the United States for exposing the war crimes that he, his platform exposed about the US. Now that guys, day X is just around the corner and day X is going to be tomorrow, Tuesday and on Wednesday, the 21st of February is the last chance of Julian Assange in the British court to stop his extradition. If he's extradited to the United States, he may face up to 170 years in prison, right? Just for you guys to know, because I see uh, Mehdi says that uh, the lies he told about Iran are enough to reject him. <clears throat> you can reject him. I can also reject him if I want to, uh, because he published also information about Syria, secret information, the emails, for example, of President Assad. But he never lied himself. He published documents he received, and those documents are secret documents, and he made them available for the people to see. So in to today's entire live streaming is going to be dedicated for Julian Assange. If you want to help Julian Assange, guys, I put the link for his crowdfunding and for his legal team also in the description below. Julian Assange is an Australian journalist, publisher, and founder of the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. He gained international prominence for his role in publishing classified documents that exposed government and corporate wrongdoings. Assange first gained attention in 2010 when WikiLeaks released classified U.S. military footage showing a helicopter attack in Iraq that resulted in ca civilian casualties that the United States wanted to cover up. Subsequently, WikiLeaks published hundreds of thousands of diplomatic cables and other documents sparking debate worldwide about dirty politics behind closed doors. In 2010, the establishment in the United States came after Assange and accused him of, quote, sexual misconduct in Sweden. How convenient. Every time somebody speaks the truth, this guy will be accused of, rape or sexual misconduct, which later proven to be yet another lie to tarnish his reputation and the credibility of his website and his work. Assange sought asylum at the Ecuadorian embassy in London in 2012 to avoid extradition to the US, remaining there for seven years. During this time, he continued working with WikiLeaks while the CIA spied on him and even planned and plotted to assassinate him. In 2019, the new pro-US government in Ecuador revoked Assange's asylum and the British police arrested him and sent him to a maximum security jail with brutal criminals. Meanwhile, the US indicted him for, quote, conspiracy to commit computer intrusion, quote, ended relating to the Chelsea Manning leaks. Since then, Assange has been fighting extradition to the U.S., arguing that the charges against him are politically motivated and his extradition would violate his rights. Assange is married to Stella Assange and he has 
two boys. Now I'm going to show you guys a short video that I prepared about Julian Assange, which is going to be published in length tonight on my personal X account with the graphics and with the background music. But as I promised you guys per week, I'm doing around two to three short videos that I'm showing you here exclusively on YouTube first. And then at 8 p.m. Central European time, I'm publishing on my personal X account. Let's take a look together. My name is Kewak Almasiana. I'm a journalist and the founder of the Syriana Analysis Platform. My area of expertise is Middle Eastern politics. A determination will soon be made by the British High Court on whether to extradite Julian Assange to the United States, where he is accused by Washington under the Espionage Act of publishing information that incriminates the U.S. As a journalist myself, I'm asking the court not to extradite him to the U.S. and instead to set him free, and not to set a precedent for extraditing foreign national to a country whose security agencies plotted to assassinate him. Opposite to the claim of the U.S., Julian Assange did not hack and did not break into American government and military classified documents. It was Chelsea Manning who leaked to Julian Assange, a journalist who ran Wikileaks. Manning was caught and punished because she was an American government employee, and she broke the law by leaking classified material to Julian. But Assange is a journalist, and it is widely common journalistic practice for journalists to publish classified documents that are passed to them. Assange was not the only one who published the classified documents. Many in the mainstream media published too, including in the US and Germany. So if Julian is guilty of publishing the documents, and he should be imprisoned, American jails will be full of journalists for the crime of publishing documents that the US doesn't like. As a journalist myself, if I receive a classified document from a government source, I would do exactly what Julian and other journalists did, because powerful governments with a track record of breaking international law and spreading havoc around the world under the guise of spreading democracy must be exposed to the public and shown to their people that their politicians are criminals and must be held accountable. And that is what the US hates the most to be exposed in front of its own people and the global public as a pariah power, breaking international law and committing horrendous war crimes to keep the US a hegemonic power and fill the pockets of the military industrial complex. One of the thousands of documents WikiLeaks published and exposed the blatant lies about the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya and Syria was the batch of documents showing the corruption in the Organization of the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, regarding the alleged chemical attack in Duma in 2018, which the US and its allies accused Assad of gassing his own people. An Iraq WMD-level type of a lie, which led to tripartite aggression against my country. In this case, Wikileaks showed to the world the scandal of doctoring facts in the released version of the OPCW chemical weapons report on Syria, including a memo stating that 20 inspectors think the released version, quote, didn't reflect the views of the team members that deployed to Syria. Julian Assange is sitting in Belmarsh prison separated from his wife and kids and from us. On 20 and 21st February, there will be a day X protesting Julian Assange's hearing at the High Court in London, where the final steps for his extradition to the US will be contested. If you are in London or close, I urge you to go and protest for Julian Assange and the millions of his admirers who are waiting for his release to walk in his steps. So every single information I mentioned in this short video, I'm going to document it now so that we can together see the case and explore the case of Julian Assange. But before doing that, as I told you guys, this video will be definitely suppressed by YouTube and the videos that I post after this video will be suppressed for a few days. Usually when I do live streaming, at least 200 people join and watch between 200 to 800 people. And now we are below the 100 people. So if you like to support this work and navigate through the algorithm of YouTube, please hit the like button while you're watching this video because more people have to see what's happening with Julian Assange and care about the case of Julian Assange. And to begin with, I'm going to show you the recent photos, uh, the recent photo of Julian Assange's kids 
which his wife published on her personal account, Stella says, Today our kids saw Julian in Belmarsh High Security Prison. We took this picture outside. On Tuesday, the final U.S. extradition hearing begins. We don't know what happens next. So from the humanitarian perspective, of course, Julian already lived seven years in the Ecuadorian embassy, and now he's been many years in the Belmarsh prison, living among like brutal criminals. So if you care about his case, if you're close to London, if you're living in London, guys, this is the the the, the banner or the declaration or the announcement for the protest to defend Julian Assange. So if you care about free press, I would encourage you and I would urge you to go protest to defend a free press. Day X is here, the last chance in the British court to stop Julian Assange's extradition. It's on Tuesday, the 28th, and Wednesday, the 21st of February. It starts at 8.30 a.m. Royal Courts of Justice, Strand, London, WC2A2LL, near nearest tubes, Hellborn and Temple. So if you are already a Brit or an English or you live in London, you know these addresses. Now, according to his wife, guys, if he's extradited to the United States, he may he may not survive there, right? This is from the BBC. Julian Assange, his wife says he would not survive the United States jail if extradited. Julian Assange's wife says WikiLeaks founder would not survive being extradited from the UK to the US. His final appeal will be heard at the High Court on Tuesday, and Stella Assange says he is physically and mentally extremely weak. She told BBC Radio 4 at 4 Today program that this could very well be the final hearing for Julian. Stella Assange told the BBC that if her husband loses Tuesday's High Court case in London, there is no possibility for further appeal in this jurisdiction. However, she did raise the possibility of applying to the European Court of Human Rights to try to secure an emergency injunction. She suggested that based on similar extradition cases, there would only be a matter of 24 hours in which to make such a legal move. She told the BBC that stress caused by the case had left her husband physically and mentally in a very difficult place, knowing that anything could happen this week, this case will determine if he lives or dies, essentially. And guys, the the issue is not like drama, like she's not trying to do a drama, right? Because they can use this case and say that uh, he's weak mentally and physically as a as a factor to stop his extradition to the United States. But there are attempts by the United States to kill him when he was in the Ecuadorian embassy and they plotted to assassinate him. Mike Pompeo, when he was the head of the CIA, he, and then when he was the national security uh, for or foreign minister of uh, Trump, he planned on assassinating him. And this is from Declassified Australia, the Assange death plots. In September 2021, the Department of Foreign Affairs in Australia became aware of media reports detailing CIA planning to murder Assange in London. The plot revealed to journalists working for Yahoo News, who spoke for over 30 intelligence sources involved consideration by CIA of plans to poison Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy or to shoot him should he attempt to flee. Now that Assange faces imminent extradition to the United States, another death risk arises. There is the distinct possibility of further charges being laid against Assange in the U.S. Recall that 17 additional charges were later added by U.S. authorities to the original charge he was arrested for in the embassy in 2019. Reports last year showed Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI investigators were continuing to interview further witnesses seeking potentially new evidence against Assange. Although although the state of Virginia, where Assange will be held and will face court if extradited, has abolished the death penalty, several federal laws that could be used to lay further charges still carry the death penalty, and those laws have precedence. So, like, he's already accused of 17 charges, and if he is extradited to the United States, the FBI could add more 
accusations and more charges, can press more charges against him. And some of these charges could lead into death penalty, even in the Virginia state where death penalty is abolished. UK law, however, doesn't allow the extradition of a person to any jurisdiction where they may face the death penalty. It is not known how or even if the UK court will address this possibility of new charges attracting the death penalty in assessing the US extradition request. This real fear is believed to be part of the final appeal being made by Assange's legal team as it enters the UK High Court this coming week. So, it seems that his uh, legal team, defense team, are uh, prepared and they have information from the United States that the FBI is collecting further evidence and speaking with people with eyewitnesses to press more charges against him that could potentially lead uh, Assange receiving death penalty in the United States. And this could be... Um, this could be a factor that the UK High Court would not allow the UK authorities to extradite him to the United States. What do you think about this case, guys? Do you think that the UK High Court will be fair about this case? Do you believe that the justice will prevail in this case? Or do you think this court will be politicized? Let me know your opinion in the live chat. I would like to read while I am presenting to you this information. Now, there is a brilliant report was prepared by Yahoo, and this was the first time when they published the information that Assange, there was a plot and a conspiracy to assassinate uh, Assange. And this is the source of the article, Kidnapping, Assassination, and the London Shootout Inside the CIA's Secret War Plans Against WikiLeaks. I will show you the, the video that they prepared. I think it's a brilliant one, and we can watch it together. When Julian Assange appeared at the National Press Club in April 2010 to release a video depicting a U.S. Apache military helicopter killing 18 people, including two Reuters journalists. This particular event is, this is clearly murder. He was hailed in some circles as a hero. We really owe a, a debt uh, to Mr. Assange and to WikiLeaks. In the months that followed, WikiLeaks released massive tranches of classified and sensitive documents related to the U.S. wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as more than 250,000 U.S. diplomatic cables. As U.S. intelligence agencies scrambled to deal with leaks on a scale never seen before, Assange rose to worldwide stardom, and for some, infamy. Government secrets, lies, and embarrassing facts, they're all on the web for anyone to see. The story behind the biggest leak in intelligence history, profile on me. Hello, America. <laughs> I'm Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks. But with infamy came increased scrutiny for Assange. And by 2012, the walls were closing in. Faced with an extradition order to Sweden for multiple charges, including rape, he found refuge in Ecuador's London embassy. I thank President Correa for the courage he has shown in considering and in granting me political asylum. The Obama administration struggled with the First Amendment issues surrounding charging Assange with crimes related to the disclosure of classified information. The fact is, these documents don't reveal any issues that haven't already informed our public debate. And ultimately declined to do so. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. With the advent of the Trump administration also came new blood to the upper echelons of the Justice Department and national security bureaucracy, and a new tougher attitude toward Assange. It's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. This antagonism only intensified when WikiLeaks started publishing ultra-secret CIA hacking tools in March 2017. In response, the CIA repeatedly proposed kidnapping the WikiLeaks founder from the Ecuadorian embassy in London and flying him to the United States. Some senior Trump administration officials and CIA executives even discussed assassinating Assange, according to former intelligence officials. Later in 2017, U.S. intelligence agencies picked up reports that Russian intelligence agents were plotting to arrange for Assange to escape London. Some of the suspected scenarios appeared almost cartoonish, ranging from the lanky Australian hiding himself in a laundry cart to hopping into a Russian diplomat's van and being loaded onto a cargo plane to Russia. 
The intrigue over an Assange breakout set up a wild scramble among rival spy agencies to position themselves for what might happen. CIA and Trump administration officials prepared for a number of scenarios to prevent Assange from escaping to Russia, including potential gun battles with Russian operatives on the streets of London, smashing a car into the vehicle transporting Assange and grabbing him, and shooting out the tires of a plane carrying Assange before it could take off. While the kidnapping plot never came to pass, President Trump was briefed and warned that the matter could provoke an international incident. Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. Other officials, including Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who was, quote, very, very anti-Assange, argued that Assange's case was best handled through overt legal channels. The Attorney General uh, will be involved in that and he'll make a decision. By 2019, the Swedes had dropped their investigation into Assange, but the WikiLeaks founder had also worn out his welcome in the Ecuadorian embassy. Exactly nine years and six days after his first appearance at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Assange was evicted and released into British custody. That same day, the U.S. government unsealed its initial indictment of Assange. A British judge initially ruled that Assange could not be extradited to the United States, citing a high risk of suicide. But in July, a UK court formally permitted a US appeal to move forward. For now, Assange's legal odyssey appears to have only just begun. You know what's sickening about this uh, report? Not the report itself, but Donald Trump, he weaponized the documents released by WikiLeaks to during his electoral campaign against Hillary Clinton, his uh, opponent, because Hillary Clinton's emails were hacked and uh, many of the, uh, her emails were leaked to WikiLeaks, which were published later to the, uh, to the public, which shows her corruption and her dirty politics behind closed doors. And he weaponized on it, right? And he used these documents during his electoral campaign to defeat Hillary Clinton. And then when he came to power, he said, I don't know anything about uh, uh, WikiLeaks. And his team, they were the ones who as, um, planned on assassinating Julian Assange and also indicted him, right? And now it continues under uh, the Biden administration. Everybody was hopeful that Trump will pardon him the last day of his presidency, and he never did it, which shows you how these politicians have no integrity, you know, and they don't have a soul, really, like they don't have a human soul, they don't have a connection and attachment to the people and their suffering. They're completely in a in an uh, ivory coast, you know, they're completely in a different place, and they have different calculations, and the people and their interest is not in their best interest, right? This is the, to, to, pull, to put it mildly. Now, he is accused of being an, uh, of course, a Russian agent and a Russian asset, right? And this is a brilliant article written by uh, our friend Kit Clarenberg, who was recently um, cancelled by uh, Twitter or X. He's been suspended now for three months for violating the t- rules of uh, of X. And I'm not going to read all the article, but you ca- you can. Uh, I will drop the link now in the live chat if you want to read it later, guys, completely. But I'm just going to read to you the first part of this article when he's uh, addressing the accusations against him. A, prob- a prominent label against Julian was that he operated upon the orders and in the interests of the Kremlin. When British police forcibly hauled Julian handcuffed out of the Ecuadorian embassy, many mainstream outlets and a great many Russia gators cheered, believing he would soon be indicted for his GRU assisted GRU is the Russian uh, armed forces for his GRU assisted role in subverting the outcome of the 2016 U.S. presidential election. No such charges have been forthcoming, and in September 2021, Yahoo News inadvertently let an incongruous cat out of the bag. The outlet revealed the CIA had explored plans to surveil, kidnap, and even kill Julian while he was ensconked in the Ecuadorian embassy. 
The explosive report was almost entirely ignored by the mainstream media, although one fundamental aspect of the article, even its advocates and promoters largely overlooked, was the disclosure that the CIA possessed no evidence Julian or Wikileaks had any ties whatsoever with Russia. Difficulty in proving he or his organization had operated at the direct behest of the Kremlin was reportedly a major factor when in April 2017, Mike Pompeo, then CIA director, designated WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence service. That unfounded assertion opened the flawed gates for the agency's untrammeled surveillance, harassment, and persecution of Julian and his collaborators. It also serves as justification for its assassination plots. There is another dimension to this mephitic myth that has largely remained unexplored. Integrity Initiative, a covered British intelligence information warfare operation, was pivotal to perpetuating the narrative of Julian as Kremlin asset. This sordid tale reveals just how flimsy Western propaganda campaigns are concocted and then disseminated through compliant media. Now, with Julian facing extradition to the U.S., it has never been more urgent to expose. This is a very long and very, very brilliant article, guys. I just dropped the link in the uh, live chat. You can go and read the rest of it. I think it's very important to keep it in your archives if you want to discuss or debate someone about this case when they accuse Julian Assange of being... um, uh, an asset for for the Russians. Now, I just want to show you what Mike Pompeo once said. I don't know, guys, if you Mike Pompeo uh, cheat, lie when he said, like we in the CIA. Yeah, this is the video. Uh, we are trained on cheating and lying. Like this is the guy who designated the WikiLeaks as a foreign agent, right? Look what he says here. Mike Pompeo. He was the CIA director. We lie. We cheat. We steal. When I was a cadet. What's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Hmm. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, and stole. It's like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. The glory of the American experiment. We had the... Uh, Training courses to lie, to cheat. <laughs> this is the glory of the American experiment. Seriously, Mike Pompeo. I'm very happy that there are American people with integrity, for example, like Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone, of course, he's a very good supporter of Julian Assange, and he published a new video. Oliver Stone calls attention to protests in London and globally on February 2021st as Julian Assange's final UK court hearing nears. He is one of us. He is more than that. He is the collective us. If he goes down, a part of each one of us goes down. Hi, I'm Oliver Stone. Please remember that Julian Assange is still sitting in that harsh Belmarsh prison in London. Separated now for years from his wife, Stella, his two children, and the hundreds of thousands of people who admire his fight for truth and justice against the war crimes of the U.S. and British governments. Even the Australian government, Julian's birthland, is finally objecting to, the, to this illegal detention of its own citizen. Although the United States continues to dismiss Australian claims of sovereignty, On 20 and 21 February, there will be a day X protesting Julian's hearing at the High Court in London, where the final steps in his extradition to the United States will be contested. If you're in London or close, I urge you to go and be heard. The world needs to be reminded, and so does Julian. He's one of us. He's more than that. He's the collective us. If he goes down, a part of each one of us goes down. May peace and sanity prevail. Thank you. Yeah, the Australian government, it's true that they want the uh, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange back home, not sent to the US, but it's too little too late. Too little too late. What what have they done on a diplomatic level or on a legal level, level to defend Julian Assange and ban his extradition or stop his extradition to the United States? 
they just come now one week before the final decision by the UK High Court and say that they reject the extradition. What what did they do seriously in the past 10, 13, 14 years when Julian Assange was suffering in the Ecuadorian embassy and then he's been sent to the Belmarsh prison? What did they do about this case? I, I need concrete steps that they have done which helped Julian Assange, right? Nothing. This is in my observation. I follow Julian Assange's case since the beginning when he took a, a refuge or asylum and then when he was arrested by the UK police and sent to the Belmarsh and all the court sessions. I didn't see the Australian government is moving to do something serious to in support of its citizens. So probably, just probably, maybe they know that this is the last chance. And if he, if this court decides that he has to be extradited, then the government of Australia comes and say, we were against his extradition, right? Just in front of its own public. So Australian Prime Minister Antonio Albanese said Thursday he hoped for an amicable end to the prosecution of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange after lawmakers ramped up pressure on the United States and Britain by passing a motion calling for the Australian citizen to be allowed to return to his home country. Albanese told Parliament that the days before London's High Court hears Assange's appeal next week against extradition to the United States on espionage charges were a critical period. He said, quote, I hope this can be resolved. I hope it can be resolved amicably. I hope. It's like he's hoping. You're a politician. If you are the leader of your country, you have the legal means, you have the financial means, you have the political means to do something. You hope. It's not up to Australia to interfere in the legal processes of other countries, but it is appropriate for us to put our very strong view that those countries need to take into account the need for this to be concluded, Albany said. Regardless of where people stand, this thing cannot just go on and on and on indefinitely. Yeah, so much talk, but no concrete actions on the ground. This is the report from the Australian Sky News. Thanks so much for coming in to talk to us today. Um, I want to first draw our, our viewers' attention to what's happened in the Australian Parliament. And uh, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has stepped in saying enough is enough. And he's calling on the US and the UK to release him and return him to Australia. That's right. We've seen unprecedented political support shown in the Australian Parliament this week. It's been a position of this Prime Minister since coming to government that enough is enough. This case ought to be brought to an end and Julian Assange ought to be permitted to go home to Australia. But this week we saw a resolution passed in the Parliament, passed by two thirds of the Australian Parliament, which is a reflection of the, pu the public support for Julian Assange at home in Australia, but also the support calling on the UK and the US to drop this case and to allow him to go home. So politically, this, there's a lot of political pressure. The Australian government has made representations to the US to drop the case and continues to do so. And we're working with them to try to seek a political resolution. Yeah, too little, too late. Uh, the Australian government is uh, capable of telling their American partners and British partners that uh, we will take steps if uh, legal steps or diplomatic steps or economic steps, and there will be consequences if our citizen and our national is extradited to the United States, there will be consequences, right? But they don't dare to say that. And they don't. They will not say that. That there is oh, we are, they are mounting pressure against the UK and the United States. What kind of mounting pressure is that? It's just verbal pressure. Nothing, nothing consequential is going to happen for the United States and the UK if they extradite Julian Assange and he dies. God forbidden in the American jail, right? Nothing. Guys, if you just joined this live streaming, I would really appreciate if you hit the like button. Unfortunately, every time I speak about Julian Assange's case, these the videos are getting insanely suppressed by by YouTube. They don't want to see, they don't want you to see this video. They don't want people to learn more about Julian Assange. And when I create a video about Julian Assange and the next few videos that I post, for example, tomorrow and after tomorrow and probably after tomorrow, all these videos get suppressed as well. So I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, hit the like button and share this video uh, with your friends. George Galloway, I'm happy that he also posted a video. These people with an influential voices uh, are all posting and sharing about Julian Assange. And today's video is all about Julian Assange. So I want to share everyone's opinion I was able to find on X and other platforms in order to raise awareness about this case. 
after almost five years in a London dungeon for telling the truth to the world about what our leaders are doing in our name with our money under our flags. It's the witching hour in the High Court in London on the Strand. Thousands will gather outside the court to bear witness to whether British justice is a thing of the past. And a shiver ran along the Labour front bench looking for a spine to run up. Has Keir Starmer found a spine today at the Labour conference as I breathed down the labor neck in the so he goes on with uh, other topics of course here but uh, there's so many people publishing uh, videos and wikileaks is retweeting their uh, videos if you go to the official page guys of uh, wikileaks i will just show you there is so much activity going on there if you're on x and you would like to uh, participate in creating a trend and uh, participating in the buzz on social media platforms. Believe me, your voice matters. And this is the official page of WikiLeaks on Twitter. They have 5.6 million followers. And um, the, the activity on their page is now going crazy. This is from uh, a message from Jeremy Corbyn as well about this. Let's see what he has to say about it. This is a new... Tuesday the 20th, Wednesday the 21st, Royal Courts of Justice. I'm going to be there in the morning. We want a lot of people there at 8.30 in the morning to support Julian Assange. This is a key moment in the legal battle to free Julian Assange. He's told the world a lot about American foreign policy, a lot about global corporations, a lot about the secret state that is so dominant of people's lives. Julian has been now four years in Belmarsh prison. He's been years fighting this case. We're not going to give up on it. We're not going to walk away from him. We're there to support Julian. Join me Tuesday and Wednesday this week at the Royal Courts of Justice. But I just say this, there's one thing Julian is guilty of, telling the truth, telling the truth about war, about global crime. Well done, Julian. You have our love and support. Guys, if you are not uh, in London or close to London, at least go to the page of WikiLeaks and uh, retweet these uh, videos. This is RFK, although I'm despising him recently for his opinion on the Gaza Strip. He says, um, he also published, he says, it's time we stood up for Julian Assange the way he stood up for us. I, I mean, let's see what he has to say when uh, Julian Assange uh, speaks up his mind about the Gaza Strip and what's happening there, because apparently uh, RFK lost his mind, uh, loses his mind when it comes to Israel. This is Yanis uh, Varoufakis. He is a former minister, a Greek minister. He says, my appeal that Julian Assange is granted the right to appeal at the UK High Court. Like, you can see guys, they are uh, John Mersheimer, he prepared like a seven and a half minute video about Julian Assange. Those are all great personalities speaking about this case, right? And this is, uh, I apologize for not knowing him, but he is I, uh, A-I-Y-Y-Y. He's uh, also a personality, apparently, that uh, a famous one. There are so many, so many other information here. And, and if you're not able to go to London at least participate in the online community and amplify the voice of Julian Assange and the millions of people who support him. That would be really appreciated. Now, since I come from Syria, guys, I want to show you one of the few, one of the many uh, um, exposés that the WikiLeaks participated in the literature, for example, of the Syrian war. And this was in 2019. And it was about an incident that happened in 20. 18. Uh, the WikiLeaks, they published an internal email that the employees of the OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, were sending to each other. And there was a corruption happening inside the organization. And the experts who were on the ground in Syria, they were saying that uh, there is an evidence of unacceptable practices in OPCW during investigation into the alleged chemical attack in Douma, Syria, on April 7, 2018. So I'm going to show you a little bit some of the segments of these uh, documents that uh, WikiLeaks published, because there is so much talk about the Syrian chemical attacks, right? This was published in on the 23rd of November 
2019, internal OPCW email. OPCW management accused of doctoring Syrian chemical weapons report. Wikileaks today publishes an email sent by a member of an OPCW fact-finding mission to Syria to his superiors in which he expresses his gravest concern over intentional bias introduced to a redacted version of the report he co-authored. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons sent a team of experts to investigate allegations that a chemical attack took place in the Syrian city of Douma on the 7th of April 2018. The author of the email was a member of the team and claims the redacted preliminary version of the report misrepresents the facts he and his colleagues discovered on the ground. The email is dated on the 22nd of June. He says... He says this, this misrepresentation was achieved by selective omission, introducing a bias which undermines the credibility of the report. Further, it claims that crucial facts that have remained in the redacted version, quote, have morphed into something quite different to what was originally drafted. This is said to have have done at the behest of the Office of the Director General, a post that was held by Turkish diplomat Ahmed Uzumcu at the time. He has since been replaced by Spaniard Fernando Areas. The attack in question was widely attributed to the Syrian army based on reports by rebel forces that were present in Douma at the time, and this assertion was backed by the United States, British, and French governments. These three countries carried out airstrikes against Syrian government targets in response on the 14th of April 2018. This was before the fact-finding team has gained access to the site in Douma. The omission there was delayed for nearly two weeks by entrenched rebel fighters and subsequent clashes between the rebels and government forces that moved into the area. Upon arrival, the team found much of the physical evidence, including the bodies of the deceased, was no longer available. It was alleged that 49 had died and up to 650 had been seriously affected by a weaponized chemical gas released in a specific area of rebel-held Duma on that day in April. Rebels claimed the gas came from cylinders dropped from aircraft, clearly implicating the Syrian government forces who had completely complete air superiority. The redacted report, however, seemed to support these conclusions, but the author of the released email outlines some specific aspects of it which he considers, quote, particularly worrisome. Firstly, there is a statement in the redacted report. It states that there is sufficient evidence to determine the presence of, quote, chlorine or another reactive chlorine containing chemical. The email points out that this was, quote, likely one or more chemicals that contain a reactive chlorine atom. Such chemicals could include the major ingredient of household chlorine-based bleach, Purposely singling out chlorine gas as one of the possibilities is disingenuous. The redacted report also removed context from a claim in the original draft which concerned the likelihood of the gas having emanated from cylinders found at the scene in Duma. The original text is said to have purposely emphasized that there was insufficient evidence to affirm this being the case. This is, quote, a major deviation from the original report, according to the author. Now, if you go a little bit up, this is at a later stage. On the 14th of December 2019, Wikileaks published again some of its documents that they had uh, they, uh, they, they, they had in hand over from the OPCW. Today, Wikileaks releases more documents showing internal disagreement within the OPCW about how facts were misrepresented in a redacted version of a report on an alleged chemical attack in Douma in April 2018. Amongst this is a memorandum written in protest by one of the scientists sent on a fact-finding mission, FFM, to investigate the attack. It is dated 14 March 2019 and is addressed to Fernando Areas, Director General of the organization. This was exactly two weeks after the organization published its final report on the Duma investigation. Wikileaks is also releasing the original 
preliminary report for the first time along with the redacted version that was released by the OPCW for comparison. Additionally, we are publishing a detailed comparison of the original interim report with the redacted interim report and the final report along with relevant comments from a member of the original fact-finding mission. These documents should help clarify the series of changes that the report went through, which skewed the facts and introduced bias according to statements made by the members of the FFM. The aforementioned memo states that around 20 inspectors have expressed concerns over the final FFM report, which they feel, quote, didn't reflect the views of the team members that deployed to Duma. Only one member of the fact-finding team that went to Duma, a paramedic, is said to have contributed to the final version of the report. Apart from that one person, an entirely new team was gathered to assemble the final report, referred to as FFM core team. And finally, this is the last part. This is coming on the uh, 27th of December 2019. Today, Wikileaks releases more internal documents from the OPCW regarding the investigation into the alleged chemical attack in Duma in April 2018. One of the documents is an exchange email dated 27 and 28 February between members of the fact-finding mission FFM deployed to Duma and the senior officials of the OPCW. It includes an email from Sebastian Braha, chief of cabinet at the OPCW, where he instructs that an engineering report from Ian Henderson should be removed from the secure registry of the organization. Quote, Please get this document out of DRA, Documents Registry Archive, archive, and please remove all traces, if any, of its delivery, storage, whatever, in DRA. The main finding of Henderson, who inspected the sites in Duma and two cylinders that were found on the site of the alleged attack, was that they were more likely manually placed there than dropped from an from a plane or helicopter from considerable heights. His findings were omitted from the final report, OPCW report on the Duma incident. According to the minutes leaked today, with respect to the consistency of the observed and reported symptoms of the alleged victims with possible exposure to chlorine gas or similar, the experts were conclusive in their statement that there were, was no correlation between symptoms and chlorine exposure. The OPCW team members wrote that the key takeaway message from the meeting was, quote, that the symptoms observed were inconsistent with exposure to chlorine and no other obvious candidate chemical causing the symptoms could be identified. So, guys, this is one of the many cases that happened in Syria that they accused the Syrian government of gassing his own people and using chemical weapons against the anti-government protesters, civilians, etc. And this was documented by WikiLeaks with a brilliant job for leaking such a sensitive information from the internal emails of the OPCW. That's why such organizations like the WikiLeaks is very important because the information that the the information warfare that the United States, the UK, France, and other imperialist powers um spread and they disseminated among the people and they normalized uh, it as a, if it's a fact that Assad wakes up in the morning and gathers his own people. This has led into tripartite aggression against Syria. The US, Britain and France came and bombed Syria, right? This is a big thing. It should be a big scandal. It is against international law and it came even before the OPCW sent its investigators to Duma. And when the investigators arrived to Duma in 2018 and they found that, the, at least from my understanding, that the cylinder was not uh, has not fell, which, which supposedly leaked these chlorine gas, has not fell from a helicopter, but rather somebody manually put it over the building, to that the symptoms... Uh, that the people who were shown in the video published by the White Helmets, which is an MI6 agency organization, it doesn't uh, it doesn't fit the narrative that they were exposed to chlorine gas. This is not a symptom of someone who was exposed to chlorine gas. So there were so many things that the scientists collected, and they wanted to say that 
probably there was no chlorine attack there and probably the cylinders were put there manually and they didn't fell from a helicopter and those parts were the context and the evidence were taken away from the findings of the researchers, of the scientists of the OPCW by the administration of the OPCW headed back then by a Turkish diplomat and then by Arias who are both have close relations with the United States. So the corruption here is very, very staggering. The corruption here is very scandalous, in my opinion. And WikiLeaks, thanks to WikiLeaks, who was founded by Julian Assange, we know about this information. And we can debate and debunk these lies that they spread about Syria and in other cases like Iraq, like Libya, right? So, of course, if WikiLeaks posted something about Iran and you can prove that it's a lie, you can go and you can create an, uh, a video or you can speak about it and you can debunk the claims. But the, the role of WikiLeaks is not political analysis, it's not political commentary. If their hands are on a document, they publish it. This document, WikiLeaks has not proven yet to have published any document that is untrue. So if they publish something that is anti-Iran, it's a document and probably it's correct. So you have, we have to live with things and we have to understand that governments are not saints and governments are also, they have their sh shadow business from behind closed doors. And this, ha this, this uh, doesn't uh, incriminate, let's say, Iran. However, all the governments have corruption. So if they, if they uh, let's say, leaked any information from Iran that shows the corruption of the Iranian government, why not? In Syria, there is big corruption. I come from Syria and I say this all the time. All the governments have corruption among their corridors. Now, this is a video of um, about the same case by Aaron Mate when he went to the UN Security Council to speak about this case. And Max Blumenthal says, terrifying right now before testifying, I'm terrifying, testifying right now before the UN Security Council about the OPCW's Duma cover up scandal. Aaron Matty wonders why US, UK, and French representatives refuse to answer his questions and demolishes the UK representative shoddy sourcing on chemical attack symptoms. Take a look. Gas inhalation, human clinical evidence of toxicity and experience in animal models. Now, I have that study, I produced it. And it's unfortunate that the British representative is not here for me to tell him that the source that is adduced by the IIT for that claim about a foam-like substance contains no reference to a foam-like substance whatsoever. There's no mention of the word foam. There's no mention of the word secretion, no mention of frothing. There is nothing in the source provided by the IIT to support its claim that chlorine gas can produce a foam-like substance. And again, the issue here is not just whether chlorine gas can produce foaming, it's whether it can produce it rapidly because the circumstances of the Duma incident, according to the official IIT narrative, is that the Duma victims died within minutes because they were overcome by a, a toxic chlorine gas. So accordingly, uh, the foaming would have to have occurred within minutes as well. And that's also what some alleged witnesses have reported. So uh, the IIT's own source does not support its claim. Because again, in the study that is provided here by the IIT in that footnote, there's no mention of foaming whatsoever. So um, I think uh, I played it from, from the half. I would just have to. <laughs> Anyways, this is one of the uh, evidence that Avermate tried to show that the foaming that came from the mouth of the people that were shown in the video of the OPCW uh, was not consistent with the uh, pattern that we know when somebody is exposed to chlorine gas, right? And also the speed in which the foam comes from the mouth. Those are all, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the expertise of these experts. Uh, Experts and also it's scientific. Ex people need to have this scientific experience that I'm not this uh, experience about it. So I read and I check all these documents and all this evidence and I try to present to you what really happened based on information that is uh, provable, right? When I was doing my master uh, dissertation or master graduation project back then, I asked my professor if I can use some of the documents of the WikiLeaks and he said uh, yes, because they have a track record of publishing documents and information that has never been proven to be false. So 
it's a source, guys. You can use it also in your journalistic work and uh, in your academic work. As I mentioned, whether you agree with Assange personally or not, that's a completely different thing. But this is the case. And in my opinion, he's some of, one of the people who will leave legacy in this world, as I mentioned at the beginning. So this is the sticker or the announcement again. Day X is here. 20 and the 21st of February, 8.30 a.m. It's tomorrow, guys. Gather outside royal courts of justice in London. It's now or never. www.freeassangeemergencytoolkit.com Or I also published uh, how to you can crowdfund or participate in the crowdfunding of his legal campaign. It's in the description below, guys. You can also go and support WikiLeaks or his defense team financially. So, guys, let's see what is going to happen about this case. One of my colleagues is going to be there in the hearings. I will try to invite her and see uh, her opinion about this case when the final decision is made. But until then, please stay awake. And, uh, yeah, just try, just guys, try to be uh, very cautious about the narratives that the mainstream media uh intentionally uh, spreads among the people because usually there is a corruption behind it. This is just my humble opinion. And uh, if you want to uh, support this work and want more people to see this video, please hit the like button, guys, before leaving this video. It's a really great help for me. As I mentioned, YouTube has already suppressed this video. And I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central European time. And until then, may peace be upon you and upon your families. Salam.